Welcome back, all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation to bring you another video for my cronies. So in one of my recent videos, I said, which type or style, almost a faction, would you like to see next? I've been trying to kind of go through all the different Necron units and build some thematic armies with competitive spirit in mind to kind of test out all the different stuff for Necrons in a way to be able to, you know, throw some stuff out there, see what could or could not work, get some opinions from everyone out there, see what they liked, what they don't like, and uh, generally try and advance Necrons. Because over time, our Lich Guard are probably going to get nerfed. And then what do we do from there? What are some other possible options that we could see competitively for Necrons? And after pulling everyone out there, everyone came back and said they wanted to see Canoptic units, which I'm definitely happy to do because I love me some Canoptic units. And this video, the first one for the Canoptic series, is actually going to cover two Canoptic units because they kind of go hand in hand. And that is Canoptic Scarabs and the Canoptic Spiders. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Turn on the bell for notification, get notified on all the content we bring here on the channel, and the, including the rest of the Canoptic videos and the battle report for this army when eventually it will come to be, and it will come to terms, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it can do. We'll see how our Canoptic buddies can handle things. So today, we're going to talk about the Canoptic Scarabs and the Canoptic Spider, and before I get into that, I'd like to say uh, I did want to have this video out a little bit sooner, but something hit me after uh, after the GT, been working, helping open a new store, and just suddenly just really was not feeling well. So I do apologize. There's kind of been a break in some of my recording and not getting the videos out there. I'm back. I'm at full health. Just something got me a little... 48 hour bug that when I came and sat down and was trying to record, my eyes were watering. I, I was really scratchy throat. My voice sounded terrible. And I just, I could not do it. I couldn't make it through an entire recording without coughing. So I tried. I tried really, really hard. I apologize for the delay, but here we are. And not only am I giving you one unit, but I'm giving you two. I'm giving you the spiders and the scarabs because these guys kind of go hand in hand. So let's start off with the Canoptic Scarabs, which they kind of got a nerf, but this is one of those, yeah, but everyone kind of got a nerf areas. And out of all their stat line, there's only one part of their stats that really kind of bothers me because Scarabs usually were tougher. And seeing that they lost this kind of hurts. So let's start off with the Scarabs. So Canoptic Scarabs went to from a 10-inch move down to a 9-inch move, okay? Uh, that kind of hurts considering that now Fly is not what it used to be. And since Swarms cannot go through runes, these guys are going to struggle a little bit uh, getting around the field. Next up, we have the fact that they have a Toughness of 2. And that's the part that actually bothers me the most. Going from Toughness 3 down to Toughness 2 now means that basic Marine Bolters are wounding us on 2s, as well as a slew of other Strength 4 and up weapons that are going to end up wounding on 2s. 6 up save we're used to, 4 wounds as, has its, as it's always been. Leadership of 8. Leadership of 8 sounds really rough when we talk about it on paper, but... These guys already have an objective control value zero, so that's not hurting them. And most of the time, you don't want them falling out of combat, so not really need that desperate breakout. And if they are, and you happen to lose a scarab and, and take some damage, you probably, the squad is at a point that you really didn't need them very much anymore, and you want to gun down the unit that they were in combat with. But... The other point would be losing stratagem support, which the Hungry Void or reanimation would suck to not be able to have those. Hopefully, you're popping those strats and able to use them before that time occurs, if this is the target. <clears throat> now, otherwise... 
the Ellinger leadership really isn't too bad for the guys because of what, like I said, what we have had in there. It's not the end of the world, all things considered. So that is kind of, okay, so that's kind of a little rough seeing that they got depreciated down, especially considering the fact that for 40 points, you get three. For 80 points, you get six. So you're losing three bases per unit than you would have had before. Now, what are some of the perks? Because, I mean, I've talked about that. I've kind of talked down about that a little bit and how negative it is. We get into what a scare, how swarmy a scarab swarm can be now. And that's kind of the new and unique thing about the scarabs as they are now. But before we jump into that, they do have, uh, they, okay. Scarabs explode. Scarabs explode really, really well. And back in third edition, they were anti-vehicle galore. Now, granted, some of the old third edition weapons versus vehicles versus completely different gaming system, all of your guns were anti-vehicle in a way. <clears throat> Scarabs now have deadly demise, which means that when they die, you can roll a dice and have them blow up and do mortal wounds. Also, they feel... Uh, Games Workshop has done effort to fix the way that scarabs blow up. So in ninth edition, you were taxed heavily for trying to blow up a scarab base. Granted, there was still some times I'm sure we all did it because having the mortal wound output can be really nice, especially when your scarabs are in a futile situation where they're just going to get killed or there's only a couple left. Blow one up for some damage. Okay. So self-destruction. Self-destruction. At the start of your fight phase, if this unit is within engagement range of one or more enemy units, so it's just still at the beginning of the fight phase, you can select a model in the unit and destroy it. If you do, do not roll for the model's deadly demise ability. Instead, select one enemy unit that's in engagement range, add one to the dice roll if it is a vehicle, and on a two through five, that unit gets D3 mortal wounds. On a six plus, the unit suffers D3 plus three. So against vehicles, a 5-up does D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. That's a lot more damage than we were getting last time out of a single scarab base. On top of the fact, it doesn't cost you a command point. One thing that always bothered me in 9th edition was, first of all, you couldn't attack with the scarab before you, did before you blew them up. Okay, that's fine. But then it cost you a command point. And then you could still fail it if you roll a 1. So it felt like if you're going to charge me a command point on this, on this as a stratagem, it shouldn't fail. It should not fail. Or if you want it to still have the possibility of failing, let me attack with the Scarab first and then blow it up. So at least if I do lose the base, I'm not losing a command point and failing to do damage, which is where I felt it was kind of taxed a little too heavily, uh, which maybe made that a lot of times not really get used as much as maybe we wish we could have because blowing up scarab bases is fun but now it doesn't cost you a command point and the output versus vehicles that's I, i'll risk it for the biscuit on that one because you hit that five or six to do d3 plus three mortal wounds a minimal of four mortal wounds against that vehicle that that's spicy i like that now I have to talk about their, uh, the weapons and what we're looking at as far as that attack and go, well, I'm losing a scarab base. What am I losing for attack? Because actually, they're not too bad in combat. So they have the feeder mandibles, which once again have lethal hits, which last edition, six is auto wound. Now it's lethal hits. So they still retain that ability. Our scarabs went up to six attacks per model. Weapon skill four, strength two, AP zero, one damage. Uh, okay, so strength to lame, but you have lethal hits, and you have six attacks. Weapon skill five, okay, lame, but you have the Sovereign. You have a cannot to control mode. There is a lot of ways to give these guys plus one attack, or plus one um, weapon skill and plus one to hit to make it easier for them to hit. Honestly, most of the time when I was attacking with scarabs, I was just hoping for the sixes because I don't want to have to roll through the damage step. 
I just want a wound and be done with it. And I feel like these guys still fall in a good position. Now, granted, there's not a lot of re-rolls, but you can still do that and do the damage. Not to mention, these guys, you aren't really looking for them to sweep units. Their strength comes into the fact that they're able to reduce uh, enemies' objective control value with Swarm. So this is a Swarm unit. While an enemy unit was within engagement range of this unit, subtract one from the objective control characteristic of models in the enemy units to a minimal of one. We have a lot of cool ways to reanimate and tag objectives and do things like that. Scarabs, what, what they can do best is reduce that objective control value. And they also have fancy little ways to be able to, again, blow up and do damage. And the lethal hits to be able to force damage through. Scarabs in 9th edition were very easy to use. You, you could move them through runes, you can move them through walls. Fly was very powerful. And you could just rush to an objective, take an objective, and if your opponent got on that objective, swarm them, cover them, and stay in combat where you were safe, and take the objective because you were objective control. Now you are going to have to play it a little more. We got to play with a little more finesse. And that's what I'm kind of seeing with it. You need to make sure and target. And when I say you, I mean you like to myself. Like, okay, looking into a mirror, you need to make sure that you are charging into objective control value to units that are not necessarily the strongest in combat. Making sure reanimators are positioned well because, oh man. When you go and do a reanimation protocol for 2d3 on these guys to bring two of them back, I, I, in the previous edition, I needed three to die to get one base back. It's a lot easier. Um, I know some suggestions have been around the Catacomb Command Barge because they could then give these guys objective control value one. And I'm 50-50 on that. I like the Catacomb Command Barge. A couple things that I don't like is one you need to keep it close to be able to get that plus one objective control value. That's fine if the Resurrection Orb could target these guys, because the Resurrection Orb that he carries can only get infantry and mounted, which neither are what the swarms are. So you're not getting that extra reanimation buff. Spending the command point to do the reanimation on them might be efficient. And if you have the Sovereign nearby, you get D3 plus one. Okay. Unlike the play style in the past, these guys are not going to be able to just swarm the field and cover and score you points. I don't think that this makes them completely unplayable. I think this means that they have to be, again, more finesse behind them. You have to be able to, uh, you want to hit and stick and pick your targets very closely. Now, they can also be a good distraction because your opponent does not want to get bogged down by scarabs. And if you can get them in there and get a six-man squad to charge and wrap someone up and they don't have combat weapons and they don't have combat weapons nearby to clear the scarabs off, you could hold that unit there for the majority of the game. Reanimation protocol is arguably a little bit better for these guys, being that multi-wound models seem to do a little bit better off reanimation protocols. And if you have a reanimator nearby, you're really going to be kicking them into high gear. Now, we talked a lot about the reanimator. We talked about the reanimation protocols being good. But there is an even better way to reanimate scarabs and bring scarabs back. And that's with one of my other favorite units of the Necron Codex, the Canoptic Spider. So let's jump over into him. So the Canoptic Spider is looking at a movement of five, toughness seven. So that went up. Three up save. Six up, uh, six wounds, leadership eight, and objective control value two. I actually like seeing the OC value two on this guy. Uh, I mean, anytime we get a higher objective control value is great. But specifically for these guys, I feel like you move the scarabs to clear. Once everything's cleared out, the spider is the thing to kind of hang back there. Now, the spider has some cool weapons. Number one, he's got the Particle Beamer. Now, the Particle Beamer, you actually get two of these. So that's very critical. And if you, if you choose to take them, which why not? Particle Beamer is a 18-inch range, 
D6 shots with blast. Ballistic skill three. So these Canoptic Control Node and Sovereign Cornell can get him up to a two up. Strength six, AP zero, one damage, but it does have devastating wounds, which is very unique to see out of him. In close combat with the Autonomaton Claws, the E will be five attacks, weapon skill four, strength eight, AP two, and two damage. So the attack profile is roughly the same. Uh, sad that we don't have the failsafe overcharge anymore, so no more plus D3 attacks, and then Novak Dynasty, which I love to do. And you can only take these guys in the maximum squad size of two per unit. Now, that's okay. We lost a spider per unit. We still have the um, uh, Gloom Prism, which the Gloom Prism is a friendly Necron unit is within six inches of the bearer. Anytime that unit uh, gets hit with a psychic attack, they get a four up feel no pain. Okay, cool. This is something that can kind of help answer a thousand suns, which basically all their damage is psychic attacks. Uh, also, we have the fabricator claw. So while this unit is within six inches of a friendly Necron vehicle, that vehicle gets a six up feel no pain. Monolith, Doomstalker, Doomsday Arc, all of them, six up feel no pain. I mean, there is a lot of really interesting things alone that the spider can do. A single spider floating around the field uh, behind a monolith, you know, behind the Silent King. And, and being able to give these feel no pain buff out just for existing is kind of cool. And I do, I dig that that's what that does now. Yeah, granted, it's like, oh, well, we used to repair D3 before, but everything's fixing for D3. Everything is. It's not just one wound like it used to be. Now it's D3 on the reanimations. And once again, heaven forbid, you don't have a reanimator nearby to turn that into war. So I like the fact that we're not double dipping on that same ability and we got something kind of new and unique for the spiders. Now, we're talking about reanimating scarabs. <clears throat> this has been a spider thing for as long as I've known. Spiders harvest or uh, they, they kind of grow scarabs. They are the beacon. They carry them. And that still exists. And a little bit better, too. So last edition, we were able to use, a, you could put a single scarab unit back into multiple units off of a single spider. Now we can put multiple scarab units back into a single unit based on the number of spiders. So the way this works now, Canoptic Swarm. In your command phase, select one friendly Canoptic Scarab Swarm unit within six inches of this unit. One destroyed model is returned to the Canoptic Scarab Swarm unit for each spider model in this unit. This does not say anywhere in there, limit once, one time, or use this ability once. So you could go and just throw, if you had four spiders nearby, you could throw four scarabs back in there. I mean, that's the way that I see this reading. And because it doesn't say, and we see other abilities that say you can only use this ability once for battle round, or this ability can only be, a unit can only be targeted by this ability for one time. And they have um, Ghost Arc is a prime example of it and how it reanimates Necron warriors that get hit. So this can be used multiple times. Again, Scarab Swarm is only being six man at max means that you're going to have to be a little more delicate with them. So all around in conclusion, the way I feel, the way I see this is that scarabs and spiders still could have some play. The reducing objective control value is very nice. If you want to run a catacomb command barge to get that uh, plus one objective control value, that can be pretty cool. But just reducing, to, like taking a squad of Marines, that five Marines that have the objective control value 10 to a piece, and you charge in there and you kill one or two off, hopefully at least two, now you reduce that objective control value of all of them to one. These spiders that are objective control value two that are probably following up behind can hopefully sweep in there and then take the objective marker and there's nothing your opponent can do about it while as you're chewing on them with 
scarabs. You're also not afraid to blow them up because the scarabs are not going to give you that much more towards your overall objective control value. You need to remove your opponents. And that's what the scarabs will do well is to remove your opponent's objective control value. And they're relatively cheap. I mean, six bodies for 80 points, six four wound bases for 80 points. That's not bad. Granted, last edition scarabs were one of the strongest units in the entire codex. I would not say this that scarabs and spiders are the strongest unit in the codex, but they're one of the most interesting units because of what their abilities do and how they stack. I really like the fact that, that spiders are more valuable to scarabs than I think they were in the past, where now you can throw so many more in there and still reanimate. So literally you can blow up a scarab and bring it right back. I mean the next turn, next phase, all that, but you can. And uh, the Scarab's ability to reduce that objective control value is something that a lot of players are not going to be playing into. They're not expecting that, you know, you're going to run in there and like, okay, I got this I'm objective control four in here. And you're going to run in there, smack it, drop their four down to a three, and then move your spiders in to take with them being objective control to themselves. The spiders are still tough. And the spiders actually provide a pretty decent gun platform for some mortal wound damage and mortal wound output. Not to mention they hit on threes and it's just volume of fire. D6 shots per gun. So that means you're looking at two D6 shots per spider that has blast. That's, that's a pretty solid amount of firepower to come out of them. So uh, in conclusion, for my canoptic list, I'm going to be looking at probably running six spiders. Because why not? I want to make sure that I want to make sure that when we test this out and test out things like scarabs, we are trying to put ourselves in a position where we can see multiple variables. If I don't take, if I only take three man scarabs or four man scarabs or only take one six man squad of scarabs or one squad of spiders, we run a risk of that unit just getting completely obliterated off the field and not having enough data to see how this goes. Sometimes you need to force these things into late game to see how they go. At least that's how I like to try to do things. Um, I like to really overload on something so that I can get a valid test for it in a vacuum of stuff. Now, yes, the overloading into a target may not give you the best data, but it's a, the data that it does give me, gives me, really helps me make a decision on how I want to use these units moving forward. Uh, Catacomb Command Barge is solid with the Scarabs and that stuff. I just wish the Resurrection Orb would work on those guys as well. I get why it doesn't. If the Orb worked plus the Reanimator, it would just be bonkers. You would you would basically charge in, blow up a Scarab, go into your opponent's turn and go, hey, guess what? Scarab base is back. Real easy. But uh, I do like them. Um, I would think there's probably some play for them around the three mans being three bodies, that 12 wounds for 40 points. Uh, that's a unit that can really mess with someone's game. Charge onto an objective, reducing their objective control value, and then reanimate onto it. Or simply just wander onto it. So that, And that's generally how I feel about them. I'm going to uh, definitely look forward to getting these guys on the table. I love me some spiders, love me some scarabs. And they did really well for me in 9th edition, as I'm sure many else can attest to how good scarabs were in 9th edition. And I don't want to believe, <laughs> I'm going to be naive to it, and I don't want to believe that six-man scarab and a scarab swarm can't still hold its weight in this game, even with the lower toughness, even with the limitation of fly and dealing with runes. I feel like they have a unique way to reanimate off of our friends, the Canoptic Spiders, that allows us to put a heavier, stronger, meaner push. And when I say meaner, I don't mean meaner as in removing units, but meaner as in now your opponent has a different thing that they have to think about with reducing objective control, which doesn't happen that frequently. A lot of the armies I've played, I haven't really seen stuff that reduced subjective control. I know there's some out there, 
but here's a unit that does. And I think that's something that's going to not necessarily be as active in players' heads. And with the rise with custodies and their objective control, scarabs might be a nice little way to reduce that objective control value down so you can sweep and steal objectives from units like custodies. So, guys, let me know in the comments section, what are some combinations of units that you'd seen with, within the spiders and scarab realm? And uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you all again soon.